Today I want to tell you about five free or almost free handmade crafts you can make at home with things you probably already have around the house. And I'm Melody. Welcome to my channel, Making Melody Crafts. The first thing that I want to show you and the first thing I want to talk about are playing cards. There are many different ways you can embellish them. I'm just going to show you one way here today. These are color catchers. They're a laundry item. They're pretty great. They absorb different dyes that come off of your clothes in the wash. And then I've stenciled on them and stamped on them and then added different embellishments to these. I'm using these as ATCs, but you could do anything with these. You could turn them into a postcard, you could mail them, lots of fun stuff that you could do. Here's one that I did first with a layer of the color catcher, then I added on some paper, and then also another stencil that I had, and that's the other side. And the ink that I used is this Ranger Archival, really useful for many different things in the craft room. I highly recommend it. And I'm having a giveaway, and I'm giving away two Ranger ink pads. Not this large size, just the regular size, right? And there'll be instructions in the description below. I think it'll be right there if you're watching this on your phone. So check it out if you'd like to enter. I will mail them to you free of charge anywhere in the United States if you win. And all of the rules, of course, are in the description as well. The next thing that I'm going to show you is what you can do with glassine bags. So this is an example of your typical glassine bag. So it's pretty translucent and there's different ways that you can decorate that. I want to show you that in just a minute. And then this is something that you could get these days just from a pharmacy and it kind of has that same texture as a glassine bag. And depending on your pharmacy, they may actually be a little bit more like this. It's kind of like a wax paper feel. It's really great. I absolutely love these. They're so much fun in the craft room. So I would just love to show you what I did with it. This is something that I got from Tuesday morning and it's made by Bo Bunny and they're chipboard stickers and they're really sturdy for your different craft projects. So I used that and then some coordinating paper and then made this into a decorated bag. Then I did the back as well. There's many things you can do to that. Once you glue on some paper, they're pretty sturdy and very handy. Great, again, for a junk journal. You can even give it as a gift maybe put a couple of candies inside, something fun like that. And the glue that I used to put these on, believe it or not, was a Scotch Create glue stick. Really great. I cannot believe it has held on and I'm going to show you it's not moving. Like I'm really pulling on that. Even these little gumballs down here and this gift here as well. This glue is really handy to have in your craft room. I really do like it. I don't work for Scotch or 3M, but their products I have found to be very reliable. And then these letters are each individual and then I put them on there. So they're glued down with the same thing. Even when something is a sticker, I find it is best to apply extra adhesive. And then the dang of pieces. I actually got these secondhand, and I'll show you what we're gonna do with that in a little bit. Next is some altered puzzle pieces. Thumb sweater moment. So using my We Are Memory Keepers Cropodile, I used the 1 8 punch and punched out a little hole, and we're going to make these into earrings. So we'll do that in just a little bit. I wanna show you the last thing that you can do with things that are free or almost free. I got this at Sherwin Williams and I got a whole bunch of wallpaper books. Oh my gosh, I donated some to the school. This was last year that I found these and you can turn these into this. So you can make it into an envelope. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a little bit. All right, now you've heard the five things, the five free or almost free handmade crafts that you can make for little to no money. We're just gonna focus on three of these. So the first thing that I wanna show you is some altered Jenga pieces. And I got this idea from Nina Rubina. That was my inspiration. Check out her channel, really neat. She's a very creative lady. So I took some gesso and then I painted one of these, let it dry and I put on about two coats. And now I'm going to use my Ranger Archival ink. It is a dye ink, but it's oil based. So that makes it really versatile for so many different projects. And we're gonna stamp right on that Jenga block, right on top of that gesso. All right, I'm gonna hold that just for a second. It doesn't really take as long with the clear stamps for that ink to transfer, but I do wanna give it as much chance as possible. Check it out, how much fun is that? Really neat way to just send somebody some cheer, maybe a little gift, and just throw in some little encouraging blocks with different sayings on them. Also be fun for a birthday to put something like that on a gift or in somebody's package, especially now when we're not with family, but we can still 
make something and send them something that's handmade just so they know we're thinking about them. You could even use these as decorations in your house. I just think it's so much fun. What a blast. Now on to our puzzle pieces. Using the sepia color of the Ranger Archival ink and a little sponge, I edged all the sides and then also added some Mod Podge to that so it's a little bit glossy. I just did two coats and we're going to turn these into a pair of earrings. All right, as I was making this and I made the hole here, the sides aren't very large so it did kind of compromise that puzzle piece. So that happens. We're just going to pivot and do something else. If you have something like this, I don't recommend making the hole like that because it's just too close close to the edge and it just has a tendency to break. It's just, you know, very small chipboard cardboard, you know, like puzzles are, different jigsaw puzzles. So instead I turned this one over and then made the hole here. It just worked on this one. It was strong enough and it worked fine, but those things happen. So we just switch it up and then do something that works. All right. That's what we've got. Really cute. That gave me a time getting those jump rings on there just right. And of course, no, the jewelry findings are not free or almost free, but the puzzle pieces sure are. And if you have anybody with a birthday coming up, you could make something like that. And of course you could always use a bigger puzzle piece. And now lastly, I want to show you how to make those envelopes from wallpaper books. Now for the wallpaper envelope. So as you can see, it really is wallpaper. So I trimmed this down and the way to know what size you need to make the envelope. Grab whatever card it is that you're going to be using. This is an A2 size card, so it's four and a quarter by five and a half when it's folded shut like that. Then grab a ruler, measure diagonally, and when I measure this diagonally, I get about seven inches. So whatever your measurement is, then add one inch onto that and you want a square piece that size. So in this case, sorry about the glare from the ruler. In this case, this is seven inches. I add an inch, that's eight. And then we want a piece that's eight inches square, which is what we have here. It's the same way that I made this envelope. Obviously it's just a different kind of wallpaper and the pages are quite large. So you could even do a five by seven card with this, no problem. Once you have your wallpaper piece trimmed down to eight inches square, again, if you're using a four and a quarter by five and a half, and I would just measure even if you are, because if it's off a little bit, you might want to round up. So if say if it's seven and a half inches, then round that up to eight and then cut a piece nine inches square, just so that you have an extra little bit of allowance. That's always a good idea. Flip it over so it kind of looks like a diamond there. Center the card in the middle. That's pretty good. So I want to slide the card in this way. So this is the side. I'm going to go ahead and do that one and just crease it. And I'll show you why in a little bit. And don't make it too, too tight. You want to leave just maybe an eighth of an inch extra. So just a little bit of wiggle room so the recipient can slide the card in and out easily. So if you have any issues doing that or it's kind of getting stuck there, then just give yourself a little bit more room. So I don't know if you can see here, but even with this all the way to the other side, I actually do have just a little bit of space there. So that's at least an eighth of an inch there, maybe a little bit more. And you know me, I don't really do, you know, exact measurements all the time. <laughs> It's not a thing. <laughs> so let's go ahead and fold this one up. That's going to be the bottom of our envelope. So that's pretty good. I'm going to check it again before I add any adhesive. So that's moving in and out just fine. If you want to, you could cut off this little square piece because that would be a square there that you need to cut off. I don't really think it's necessary. I'm going to leave it just like that. And then I'll show you what to do to make this fold a little bit better and just make it a little bit easier. Once you've creased this, you're going to have little triangles in the corner so that there's less bulk. Go ahead and just cut out that little triangle. And this really is such an economical way to make your own envelopes and they look so cool. You can coordinate them with the cards as well. Okay, so when you cut out all four sides, cut out those little triangles from all four sides, this is what it'll look like now. Pop your card back in there just to be sure that it's how you want it to be. You don't have to do that, but it does make the envelope fold a little bit nicer. And now again, one last check before we add adhesive and then grab whatever it is that's your favorite adhesive, but definitely something permanent. I'm going to use my ATG and the adhesive that I have in here right now is one that's for metal and metallic things. So it's quite strong. I think there's less on the roll though. So if you do choose to get that, be forewarned. I don't think there's as much on the roll. It is really, really strong though. 
I don't have that all the way to the edge or the card would get stuck in there. You can actually see because of the light, you can see where the tape is. All right, let's fold the bottom of the envelope up. There we go, that's down. There is your envelope. And then we slide our card inside. So that went in pretty easily, fold it over, and there you have it. This is such a blast to make. And then you could always stamp this a little bit as well if you wanted to decorate the envelope itself or just address it to your recipient if you're mailing it in the mail. If I was using one like this, I would either put a separate label on here with an address or I would only use this type that has other print on it and other words on it if I was giving it in person. If you had some fun or learned something, please subscribe. I would appreciate it so much. And maybe hit that thumbs up button while you're at it. That helps me get noticed by YouTube. And I'll catch you later.